Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to find the graph of the solution to the, to the inequalities that we have given here. And we have four inequalities, and they're pretty basic. They're two-step problems. Uh, one, two, they're three-step problems. Um, and for each of them, after we get the solution to the inequality, we're going to use that solution to graph the inequality on the number line. And so let's begin with problem number one here. And so these are three-step problems. And here we have 3x's minus 24 is less than 6x's take away 30. And this is a three-step problem because it's going to take three steps to solve it. First, we move the x from the right side to the left. We move the constant from the left side to the right. And then we divide by the coefficient that's left over on the x. So it could be two to three problems depending on what kind of problem you have. Let's begin by transposing the x from the right to the left-hand side using the additive inverse. We're subtracting 6x's to both sides of the equation. These will cancel, and while we're doing that, we can also go ahead and move the constant from the left side to the right side, because here we're going to have negative 3x's, and minus 24, less than negative 30, and here we're just going to add 24 to both sides to get rid of the constant. So it's fine to do them both at the same time. I won't do it in the first shot of this video because it might be too much information to take in, but here the 24's will cancel. We have negative 3x's, less than negative 6 is left over here because we have sign of different signs here. 30 take away 24 is 6 and we keep the sign of the larger number. Now here in this step we have negative 3x's are less than negative 6 and what we need to do is divide both sides by the coefficient of the x and in this case we're dividing by a negative 3. Whenever we divide with a negative term it changes everything to the opposite value, right? So a negative 3 divided by a negative 3 is a positive 1. And so the x here becomes positive. And the same way this changes from an opposite number, from negative to a positive, this symbol is also going to change directions and become an arrow pointing to the right. This negative 6 also becomes a positive number when divided by a negative 3, and we get a positive 2. That's our solution to the equation. Now, our solution on the graph for this, we draw our number line where this is going to infinity, this is going to negative infinity, and here we have the value of 0 in the middle. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, right? And we're looking for the 2, and we're looking for x to be greater than 2. And this is the line of x's, and so we go to 2, which is right here, and we put an open dot, because x cannot be 2, but it must be greater than 2. So we're going to fill and shade all the values to the right of this dot going to infinity because x can be any number that's greater than 2, but it cannot be 2 itself or anything below it. So there's our first solution. Let's move on to the second equation here where we have, whoops, where we have 3x's take away 2 is greater or equal to 7x's plus 6. And again, what we want to do is take the three steps to solve this problem. The first being moving the x's to the left side. The second being moving the constants to the right side. And then dividing by the coefficient of whatever remains with the x's. So let's start with the first step here. Let's subtract 7x's to both sides. These x's go away. These give us negative 4x's. Different symbols. 7 take away 3 is 4. Keep the sign of the larger. Take away 2. Greater or equal to positive 6. The next step is get rid of this negative 2 by adding 2 to both sides of the equation. These go away. We have negative 4x's are greater or equal to 8. The next step is to divide both sides by negative 4. Again, we're dividing with a negative term. So our arrow is going to change direction. Then we're just going to take the quotient here. Negative 4x's divided by negative 4 is just x. And then here we have 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. So our solution in this one goes again, infinity to negative infinity, and we start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4, and negative 2 is right here between 0 and negative 4, and this time instead of opening, leaving an open dot, I'm going to fill the dot, because here the first solution to this problem is negative 2, and everything below it, so I'm going to shade everything below the line and the dot of negative 2, which is filled in, because it can be negative 2 also. Let's move on to number 3 up here. Let's move it up a little bit here. 
we're going to have 4x's plus 20 is greater or equal to 8x's plus 4. Again, we're going to move the x's left, the numbers right, so let's try to do this one in one shot. I'm going to subtract 8x's to both sides. And while I'm moving the 8x's from here to there, I'm going to move this 20 over here, subtracting 20 to both sides. What happens is the 20's go away, the 8x's go away, and I'm left with 4x's take away 8x's, that's negative 4x's, greater or equal to 20. 4 minus 20 is going to give us negative 16. And that's two steps in one when you do it this way. Now we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of the x, which is negative 4, which again is going to change the direction of the arrow. So this is going to now point left, and we have x, and this here becomes a positive 4. So here's our solution. x is less than or equal to 4. And so we're going to give a little more stretch to the right-hand side here, because here we'll have our 0. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's make that even. One more for negative 6. Negative infinity this way. We have infinity this way. And we're going from negative 4, which, I mean from positive 4, which is right here, including positive 4, going everywhere to the left here. Now let's go on to number 4. We have negative 6x's plus 18. It's less than or equal to negative 4x's plus 12. What we want to do here is again move the x's to the left, the constants to the right. I'm going to add 4x's here. These will cancel and while I'm doing this again I'm going to move the 18 to the other side. So I want the numbers over there. And so negative 6x's plus 4x's is negative 2x's. Less than or equal to 12 minus 18 is negative 6. Again, I'm dividing by a negative term. These will go away. Gives me a positive. The directional arrow is going to change because I'm dividing with a negative. So it's going to the right now. This divided by this is a positive 3. And I just need to graph this inequality. And this is greater or equal, again, to 3, so I draw my number line. Got my 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll go to 5 here. We have 1, 2. Let's make these nice and even. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And we're going above and beyond 3. So 1, 2, 3 is the first value that it is. It's a solid dot because it has equality. And this is going to the right of that arrow. Now before we close out this video, let me just mention a few things that are important. When we're dealing with the arrows that look like this or like this, remember, you're using an open dot to fill in the graph. When you're using arrows that are less than or greater, or greater or equal to, or less than or equal to, you fill the dot in. The direction you shade is based on the arrow when your x is on the left. So if my x is pointing right, you can expect that my line drawn from my directional arrow is going to the direction of whatever the x has. So if this says x is greater or equal to 3, I'm going to the right. If it says x is less than or equal to 4, I'm going to the left. The base of the dot is based on the inequality. If this is greater or equal or less than or equal, you take a solid. If it's just greater or less than, you expect the open dot. But the shading is also to the direction of the arrow. All right? Thank you.